Hey guys, I wanted to make a video on why you should actually be grateful for your challenges, be grateful for your struggles, be grateful for the difficult times that you have to go through in life. And I know that sounds a little strange, but if you hear me out, if you stick around for just a couple of minutes, this is going to make you feel much better about your situation if you are currently struggling, if you are currently facing challenges. And especially if you are going through struggles and challenges because you are working on getting to a higher level. Because with just about anything in life, if you like to get to a level higher than you are now, before you can go up, you first need to go down. Right? If you want to learn something new, you are not going to be good at that new thing. If you want to get into a new career field, you are going to have to give up the career field that you're already comfortable with. You are going to have to put yourself in a place where you are at a lower level than the level that you were at before. Now, I wanted to make this video now because this is a, a kind of a triumphant moment for me in my life that I went through a lot of struggle. I had, uh, well, several years ago, I was working a good job. I was making decent money. I was pretty comfortable and I quit because I wanted to work for myself. I wanted to start a business. Uh, I wanted to be able to live on my own terms and I struggled something terrible. I went from being totally comfortable and having all of my needs met to basically failing for about a year and a half. I was trying to get a business off the ground and it wasn't working. I was trying all of these different things and I would make a, a sale here or there and I'd be pretty happy about that, but I couldn't get anything to work consistently. And so during that time, I was going deeper and deeper and deeper into debt. I basically was making zero money on net. My businesses were actually losing money. I was spending more on ads than I was making in revenue. Right? And I was putting all of that ad spend on credit cards. I was putting all of my living expenses on credit cards. Uh, I was liquidating what little savings I had to pay for the bills that I couldn't pay for credit cards. So basically my financial situation was just deteriorating very quickly. And so after quite a lot of struggle, after quite a lot of losing money, after quite a lot of uncertainty and being afraid that I wouldn't be able to feed myself, just recently, I finally struck gold. I finally got my businesses to actually work, to actually uh, return several times what I was putting into them. So I actually started making good amounts of money. And just a few weeks ago, I finally paid off all my debt. I'm completely debt free. And I bought a boat, which was kind of the last uh, physical possession that I really wanted. And so here I am on the boat recording this video and it's it feels wonderful it's a huge relief but I want to make it very clear to you that this did not come without struggle this came with a lot of struggle with a lot of uncertainty uh, with a lot of challenging times with a lot of debt quite frankly and so if you're listening to this and you're in a situation like that, or better yet, if you're listening to this and you'd like to make a jump, if you'd like to make a leap of faith, you'd like to get to a higher position in life, but you're afraid, you're afraid of the challenges, you're afraid of the struggles, what I want you to know is that it's necessary and it's okay. You don't have to be afraid of it. And I wanna make the point that not only is it okay, not only do you not have to be afraid of it, but also, once you come out the other side, your struggles are going to be a valuable asset for you that you will never lose. That experience will always be with you and it's going to be very valuable to you in a number of ways that you might not have thought of. One of the ways that it's valuable is that you don't have to be afraid of being poor. Right? Once you've already experienced being poor, once you've already experienced struggle, once you've already experienced hardship, and you've gotten through alive, you know that you can do it next time. And so it really cuts down the level of fear. I remember a time in my life when I was in my early 20s that I was really poor, that I had no money in my bank account, that I was uh, filling up my gas tank in my car and, and bringing the account balance negative uh, knowingly, just because I knew that that would give me a week's worth of gas. I had no food in my refrigerator and I was, I was looking for change beneath the seats of my car trying to be able to buy a hamburger at McDonald's. That was probably the lowest point of my life. I was buying really cheap food. I was living in an apartment with three roommates. Uh, I had a car that the, the radiator leaked or something in the cooling system leaked. 
and I had to stop the car like every five minutes and open up the radiator cap, which, you know, if you know anything about cars, you know that's something you're really not supposed to do because there's a bunch of very hot water under high pressure, and as soon as you open up the radiator cap, it sprays out all over the place and it can burn you. So I had like a metal rod that I would use to poke the radiator cap until it opened, and then it sprayed all over the place and I would jump back before it hit me. And so I had to do that and I had to pour more water in the radiator because it was constantly leaking out because I didn't have any money to fix it. So I've been poor and you know, I'm sure other people have been poorer than that. Some people have been on the street, some people have lived in, in poor areas in other countries, which, you know, if you've, you know, if you've traveled around the world, you realize that American poor is, is pretty different than the rest of the world's idea of poor. But the point is that the fact that I have been through that means that I know how to be poor. I know how to be poor and get through and get to the other side. I know how to survive in those circumstances. And because of that, I'm not afraid of being poor, right? I'm not afraid that tomorrow I'm gonna lose everything and I'm gonna have to start from scratch. In fact, I'm quite confident that if I was in that situation, that I would be just fine. And the reason that that's such a valuable asset is because it opens up possibilities for me to take risks. It means that I can put the money that I have at risk. It means I can put the lifestyle that I have at risk in order to get to a higher place, right? Because in order to go up, you first have to go down. You first have to be able to take that risk. You, be, you have to be able to go into debt, to spend all your savings, you know, do whatever it takes. And if you've been poor in the future and you know how to be poor and how to survive, then that gives you the assurance that it's not going to break you, that you can afford to take that risk and you're gonna be okay. And it's funny, some people are so jealous of, of the trust fund kids, of the people who inherit a whole bunch of money. You hear people all the time complaining about these people that have all this money that they didn't earn. And I think about that and I pity those people because those people are in a position where they have a bunch of money that they didn't earn and they have never been in a situation in which they were poor. So what kind of situation is that? Well, it's a situation of being rich with money that could disappear at any time. And th first of all, they would have absolutely no idea how to get by being poor because they've never been in that situation. And secondly, they wouldn't know how to make that money back. So it would be a massive disappointment. So I, I can't help but pity those people. And I think the people that are jealous are, are, are being ridiculous, that those people are not in a good situation. And by the way, if that is your situation, if you're watching this and you are in that situation, uh, I would actually recommend it if I was in that situation, I think what I would do is I would, I would be poor voluntarily for a little while, that I would leave my money in a bank account that I'm not gonna touch, go live in a crappy apartment in a bad part of town, and try to make my way from there, you know? Maybe start by working at Walmart, or working at McDonald's or something. Because once you can prove to yourself that you can survive on very little, and you can prove to yourself that you can raise yourself back up to your own two feet without having to rely on inherited money, then your life is gonna be so much easier. There are gonna be so many opportunities open for you and you can sleep a lot easier at night. And I think this kind of gets at what Jesus meant when he said that it is easier for a, a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. We have to realize that throughout most of history, riches were mostly inherited. If you were a rich person, it's because your father was a rich person and his father was a rich person and his father was a rich person, etc. This uh, open capitalism free market that we enjoy now where any poor person can become rich is really a pretty modern development that hasn't existed for very long. So when in Jesus' day, when he was talking to this, it, in fact, I think it said a rich young ruler, which suggested by the fact that he was a ruler, that he had inherited his wealth, he's saying it's, it's difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven, right? It's very difficult for somebody who is born rich without having to earn it to develop himself. And, and maybe I'm taking liberties a little bit with the meaning, but, but I, I see it as applying in this way as well, that 
somebody who is born rich is going to have a hard time developing because there's no impetus to development, right? They, they already have all of their material needs met. Whereas I believe that we have these material needs and we have these uh, desires to teach us things, to teach us empathy for our common man, right? That's how you start a successful business. You find a need, you find some way that you can help people and then you implement it and it teaches you discipline. It teaches you faith. You need a lot of faith if you're going to step off of a, a comfortable job and start trying to run a business or start trying to get to a, a completely new career field. It takes a lot of faith. So there's a lot of, of moral development that happens as a result of that. And so if you are starting from a place where you already have everything, well, you don't have any impetus for that moral development. And I think it's interesting that the advice that Jesus gave to the man was go sell everything that you own and follow me, right? Make yourself poor, which is, I, I actually just kind of recognize this now as I was saying this, which is the same advice that I'm recommending is to try being poor for a little while learn how to have the resources inside yourself to be able to get to a better position. Now, another reason that your struggles are a very valuable asset for you is that once you come out the other side, you are going to be able to relate to people and you are going to be able to help people up. Right. If I went and told everybody that I was a trust fund kid and I was born with all this money and, uh, you know, I'm going to teach you how to make money. Right. Probably they they wouldn't listen to me for a second. Right. Because I didn't have to earn it. Right. I didn't have to come from the place that they're coming from. However, when I tell people that I was in a position where I was intentionally overdrawing my bank account just be able to to be able to survive for the next week and and searching for quarters under the seats of my car that broke down every five minutes to try to buy a hamburger uh well then they say okay okay maybe i'll listen to this guy because he knows what it is to struggle right and so think about whatever your struggle is and it doesn't necessarily have to be financial by the way if you're you know if you're poor if you're going through a difficult time with a relationship um, if you're if you're overweight, I mean, just think of this is really the easiest way to think about it. You know, those when there's a fitness program, you see that before and after picture of the person who was really fat and then they lost 100 pounds and now they look amazing. Well, just think about how helpful it is to have that before picture. Right. So wherever you are, whether it's financial or, or uh, health wise or relationship, wherever you are now, if you're in that struggling period, the worse your struggles, the more impressive the transformation is going to be. The better your before picture is that is going to um, help you to have a more compelling story. And if you decide to turn it into a product later on, which, by the way, is something that I can help you do. I explain exactly how to do that in this video. If you do that, then the fact that you've gone through struggles, that you've gone through difficulties is going to be a valuable asset for your business. It's going to make it a lot easier to sell because you are going to be much more relatable to the people who are in exactly the same position as you were when you were struggling. And it's going to make your transformation that much more impressive. So if you're struggling now, just think about once you reach your goal, once you make your transformation, how impressive is that story going to be? How impactful is that story going to be on the person who is, hears that story in the midst of their struggles? It's like the old saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, which actually correlates exactly with what the Bible says, that Jesus says that blessed are the afflicted and, and blessed are uh, I'm going to butcher the words, but blessed are the people who are going through struggles, right? And that's the reason that God allows us to go through difficult times, right? That's the reason that we have difficulty. It's always for our benefit. Every single thing that we go through is always for our benefit, no matter how bad it might seem at the time. And by the way, if you can adopt that mindset, if you can recognize that everything is for your benefit and you can sincerely believe that you are going to be so incredibly powerful. Nothing is ever going to get you down. 
And that is going to absolutely transform your life. If when something happens, you can you can recognize, even if you don't know how, if you can recognize that that is somehow for your benefit, and even better if you can start speculating on how exactly it's for your benefit. Such as, well, I'm going through financial difficulty right now, so that means that my rags to riches so story in the future is going to be all that more compelling. And it means that I'm not going to have to be afraid of being poor. Right, and probably you could come up with some other reasons that whatever struggle you're going through right now is actually good for you. However, there is one caveat to that, and that is that you have to take advantage of it. If you're going through struggles and all you do is whine and complain and you say, woe is me, my life sucks, why is the world so unfair, then you are not going to derive any benefit from it at all, and it's just going to drive you into the ground. Right, so what doesn't kill you makes you stronger if you can learn from it, if you put yourself in that situation where it makes you better instead of letting it beat you down. And that's completely up to your free will. You don't get to choose what happens to you uh, moment to moment, but you do get to choose how you respond to it. And that makes all the difference. So this is my advice. Say a prayer. Thank God. Thank God for your struggles. Be grateful for your struggles because when they're behind you, you are going to look back and you are going to recognize how they were the best thing that could have happened to you at the time. And I can tell you that from personal experience. So keep pushing through, keep looking at everything in a positive light. Thank God for everything in your life, including the things that seem negative at the time, because you will recognize in time how they were to your benefit. So I hope you found this video helpful. If so, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Please hit the thumbs up because it makes the algorithm like me or whatever the equivalent is on the platform that you're watching this on, subscribe to my channel. And if you're currently in the position where you're kind of comfortably miserable, like you're in a comfortable position that is paying the bills and you don't really have to worry about your needs being met, but you're really not fulfilled and you know that you have more potential than what you're currently meeting, then, uh, and you want to know kind of how do I get started? How do I get to the next level? Well, there's a whole bunch of ways to do it. And I give you a really good one in this video, which I highly recommend that you check out all about how to make a doctor's salary working part-time from home.